What's up YouTube? This is another episode of Bryce on Aquatics coming at you here with a how-to video, a very special how-to video. Uh, this is one that I've been wanting to do here for a little bit and this is how to paint a glass aquarium. Uh, now before I get into actually painting the tank I do want to get into a few things that you're going to want to have and want to uh, do before you even consider painting your aquarium. Uh, so first things first, obviously you're going to want spray paint. Now there are actually some rules as to spray paints that you do and don't use. Uh, I for one really like to use this stuff, Krylon Color Max Paint Plus Primer. Uh, it, this is a good paint. I've used this to paint I believe four tanks now and it holds up really well it looks good and uh, it really it covers quite a bit of ground just for this one little bottle um, now here's the what's up YouTube this is another episode of Bryce on Aquatics coming at you here with a how-to video a very special how-to video uh, this is one that I've been wanting to do here for a little bit and this is how to paint a glass aquarium. Uh, now before I get into actually painting the tank I do want to get into a few things that you're going to want to have and want to uh, do before you even consider painting your aquarium. Uh, so first things first obviously you're going to want spray paint. Now there are actually some rules as to spray paints that you do and don't use. Uh, I, for one, really like to use this stuff, Krylon Color Max Paint Plus Primer. Uh, it, this is a good paint. I've used this to paint, I believe, four tanks now. And it holds up really well. It looks good. And uh, it really it covers quite a bit of ground just for this one little bottle. Um, now, here's the rules per se of what to and what not to buy as far as spray paint goes. For one, don't buy uh, anything that says anti-mildew or anti-mold or uh, anti-dust. None of that, just plain old nothing uh, added to it, just plain old spray paint because if you get spray paint and it has the anti-mildew in it, or anti-dust, whatever it may be, if that gets even a little bit in your tank, that is going to completely screw up your entire system. And I kid you not, it will actually make it so the tank will physically not be capable of going through a cycle. So from there, your tank is basically screwed, and you're going to have to toss it, or... Uh, go through hours, hours, possibly days to scrub that whole area, clean the tank, do this, do that, test the tank, and add test fish and whatever. So that's just all stuff that can be avoided. I'll go through other steps on how to do that. Uh, but that's the first one. Uh, if you want a good, clean, black color, uh, because I'll get into different colors and why different colors are important a little bit later in the video. Now, I prefer to use the uh, just plain spray paint. There's the normal, uh, what do they call this, satin, just plain old satin black. There is a shiny black, however, uh, I don't really think that the shiny would look particularly well. I don't think it'd make that big of a difference from the inside view of the tank, but the outside would look kind of weird. Satin looks the best in my opinion. So we're going to go ahead and get on to a couple other little things on how to keep your aquarium safe and sound without getting any paint in it. Uh, one of the things that I think is, you know, one of the bigger things that you should do is get some plastic. I have a whole pile of old scrap plastic here. You can use uh, saran wrap. In fact, saran wrap might actually work better than some kind of like packing plastic like I have. Use saran wrap, 
cover the entire top, tape down all the sides, and make sure there's no way paint could leak into there. Uh, at any point, if you have to connect multiple pieces together like I have, I have three pieces in total on this tank. Get tape, run it across the seam, and just, that's it. Just leave it there. Uh, and do that per seam because you don't want any paint seeping in. Now, just to add to everything, I also like to put a little bit of bubble wrap on each corner of the tank, as you can see. And that is because you're not going to want to have the tank face up like it is here. You're going to want to have it flipped over so that the top of the tank is facing the floor. And that is also just to add some extra reinsurance that no paint will be getting into the tank. Uh, and of course the bubble wrap is there to protect the tank from cracking or getting any damage on the trim. But that is optional. Uh, if you don't have saran wrap or any kind of plastic that you can use, uh, put some cardboard on the top that just, you know, that works just as well. I prefer to use plastic just because it's a lot easier to size to the tank that you're using. Now the tank that we're painting today, we're going to get into painting here in just a second, is my 125 gallon. Uh, benefits of painting a tank, if you are a photographer, you like to take pictures of your fish. Painting the tank black makes that a lot easier. It reduces the glare. It makes the color on the fish look a lot better. It's just, it's really nice. Uh, it may, It's a lot easier to make show tanks too because assuming you have, you know, maybe it's in your living room and you have like some green paint in your living room, that's going to look pretty bad behind the tank. So if you spray paint the tank itself, you're not going to have to worry about that issue. And like I said, it does make the fish's color look better. Uh, now, speaking of specific color, okay, almost forgot. There's a couple more things you need to do before you start painting your tank. Uh, after you flip it and the top is now the bottom, you are going to want to get uh, packing tape. Don't use any other kind of tape except maybe duct tape would be good. Just any kind of wide tape and get it, put it just like I have here so that it is uh, facing, I don't know, like, this is the side I'm not painting, okay? And then all the other sides I am painting. You need to make sure that you face the tape in ways where it will prevent any... Uh, paint splatter or dust, you know, just keep it away from the front and it'll help do that. I do that, I get the tape, I put it on the front of the tank on the corner like so. I get one really long piece and put it across the entire bottom and I do the same thing that I do here over there on that side. Uh, a couple more things that you're going to want to have is for one a safety mask as you well I mean I guess not really a safety mask but you know one of these little masks uh, to go over your nose or your face uh, big ones work the best because um, you want to keep that paint out of your face as much as possible now that is just because spray paint lets off a lot of fumes and uh, Let's just say that if you don't have a mask and you're painting a whole big old tank like I am, you're going to be sky high uh, in no time at all. So, next thing you're going to want are some gloves, preferably of the rubber variety. Uh, this is just to keep paint off of your hands because last time I uh, painted a tank, I was not wearing gloves and I got paint dusted all over my hands and uh, it was just annoying. So... Uh, other thing is you would preferably want to wear some kind of safety glasses. Uh, I can't find any, so I'm going to have to roll without them. But just be careful if you don't have safety glasses because if this stuff gets in your eyes, uh, <laughs> odds are you're going to be blind for a while. So with that said, let's actually get on to doing some of the painting. 
All right, so we're gonna start up some of the painting now. Uh, I'm just gonna go through the basics with you just so you know exactly how to do it, what to do. And then we're gonna get onto the time-lapse footage where I'm actually painting the whole thing. Now, just get your spray paint. Shake it up real good because you need all the primer and paint mixed together. Otherwise, uh, it's not gonna look the best. Uh, and wh what I like to do, I mean, everybody's gonna be different on how they want their tanks done, but I like to paint the like top sides, bottom sides, uh, and the sides first, uh, just because I think it makes it easier to get all the ends done and you know do that. Uh, I always start with the back of the tank because that's the most important side that you're going to be painting. Uh, just in case you were to run out of spray paint or something, you'd at least have the most important side done. Not to mention uh, the biggest side. So with that said, let me just show you uh, how I paint it a little bit and then we'll get into some time lapse footage. Now you are going to experience some dripping as you see there. Uh, that's not a big deal. You can wipe it off. You can leave it. In the end, from the inside of the tank view, it's not going to change anything. Uh, it looks just the same. Um, if the paint gets on the trim, that's no big deal. I doubt anybody's ever going to notice. But if you are, uh, you know, if you don't want it on your trim, just put some scotch tape over it. It'll be fine. So, let's get into a little bit more painting here and then we'll continue on. Now I like to do uh, very thin layers, uh, or at least I try my best to anyways, because as you can see there is some pretty bad dripping. So you're going to want to layer it, and then once the first layer is dry, do a second, maybe even a third if you really want to. And you know, just keep going from there. So anyways, we'll go ahead and get in some time lapse footage, and I'll show you the end result. Okay, so we got the back uh, with the first layer on. Now, whenever you first start applying the spray paint, you are going to notice that there are some kind of, uh, you know, there's a few patches that are pretty thin in paint. That's normal. You're going to run into those. Odds are you're going to have some of those that are just really hard to fix. Um, but in the end, really, it, uh, it's not noticeable very much. But obviously the layers will help. If you have any that's in like right in the middle of the column of the tank, you know, like right there or something, you're going to want to take care of that. But where it tends to happen most common is up there by the trim and down there by the trim. And nobody's going to notice that. So don't worry too much about that. But, you know, go ahead and fix it. I like to fix it. Um... But yeah, so we're going to move on to the sides and the top. We're going to do a little bit of layering. And yeah, so let's get to the rest of the video. Have you ever 
Damn. Are you listening? Damn. Alright guys, sorry about that little cut clip right there while I was painting that part of the bottom. Uh, while I was filming, the camera died without me noticing, so I finished that whole thing without even knowing uh, the camera died. But I went in and I charged it, and we're back. Um, I figured since I was already done with that, I need to do a little bit of touching up with the whole thing, so I just went ahead and do that. It really wasn't much, it was just aimlessly spraying the paint all over the place just to fill any possible holes that I accidentally missed. Uh, you can see the top isn't very thoroughly done now. You don't have to be very thorough. You don't have to put a thick layer. I mean, heck, you don't even have to like paint the bottom at all just because it really isn't going to be showing unless it's a bare bottom tank. So I just kind of leave that how it is. You can see uh, there's a little bit of still wet spray paint on there from me touching each of these panels up a little bit. So this is essentially the finished product. Uh, now the only things I have to do is remove all the tape, flip it back over, remove the plastic, uh, be very thorough about checking if there's any spray paint that possibly got in the tank or on the front panel, and then move it inside, put it up, and that's it. I just have to actually do the actual setting up of the tank after that. Uh, and from there, it's all smooth sailing, you know, it's just whatever, really. Um, so next clip I'll be showing you here is the tank actually in the house, uh, put up onto the stand. Um, I'll throw in a couple more, you know, just general tips here. Uh, do a little, I guess really just do a rundown of everything that you're going to need again, just to make sure that y'all, you know, have it double checked here so mask to keep the fumes away from your nose so you don't uh, you know get yourself high off of paint unless you want to whatever <laughs> uh, gloves because you do not want to get the paint on your skin it doesn't harm you however if you plan on doing any tank maintenance uh, or anything like that, you really need to make sure that your hands have none of the spray paint on them. I mean, even the littlest bit, this stuff is very toxic to fish. Uh, so just be careful with it. Um, now, I actually do want to run through a quick little mistake that I made. 
If you noticed, whenever I was painting this side panel right here, uh, the clip did kind of stop and then I restarted uh, actually a day later because as some of you may know, I do all my filming late at night so I don't have to uh, deal with any family members or anything uh, messing up my videos or any noises. But I was painting uh, with my original bottle that I had from painting a couple other tanks, just leftover paint. Started using that. That ran out while I was doing that side. And I started using this. Uh, this is actually different paint. Same brand, same general kind, uh, same color even. But it is uh, flat and not... Um, it's not... Hold on, let me... Let me go ahead and grab the other can here. It wasn't the satin. Now, I just want to stress the importance of this because let me just put the camera down here real quick so I can open this bottle. Uh, now, the importance of this is really just, honestly, the uh, satin. As you can see, the satin is actually like a dark black color like it's an actual black color however this stuff the flat make sure you shake it up real good just to prove that it is mixed well and it's not just me messing up spray it you can see a lot of stuff around the sides is very clear almost as if it's spewing out water the Actual color is not black, it's actually, uh, it, it looks dark gray now because it's uh, wet. But if you come over here, this is some that I sprayed earlier, it turns light gray. So obviously I could not paint with that, it would just make the tank look like crap. So be very careful, read the labels, don't be an idiot like me. Make sure it says satin, not flat, not gloss, not semi-gloss. Satin, that's the stuff that's going to give you the best results. So, really with that said, I mean, I really don't have anything else to do. Just removing the tape here. You might get a little bit of broken pieces of tape on the trim of the tank. You might have to scrape that off. You can see, I just have one really big piece that's stripped across the whole uh, trim of the tank there. And, you know, just peel all it off nice and normal. You don't have to have some fancy technique for stripping that off. And then really after that, and after I take off all the plastic on the bottom, I'm done. I just got to move it inside. So with that said, let's go ahead and go check out what I got going on inside and whenever this tank is moved in the house. It'll be a split second for you, but it's uh, it's literally going to be about a day for me. So have fun. Make sure it dries, actually, this stuff. The bottle says dries in less than 10 or 10 minutes or less, but honestly, I found that about half an hour or more is usually what it takes, although that could just because uh, the thick layers that you have to use on, a, on an aquarium. But anyways, yeah, give it about, you know, just leave it out overnight. You don't want to move this stuff in immediately anyways because uh, the fumes, you need to let it fume out. Otherwise, you're going to move it into your fish room and then you and all your fish are going to be high off of uh, paint fumes. So, anyways, I'm going to stop rambling here. With that said, let's go check it out in the house. I'm going to start adding gravel, filters, this, that, and I'll have this set up and ready for the, uh, the Trimax soon. So, we'll see if I can get those in the fish room. Uh, relatively soon. Alright, so here we are. This is the painted 125 gallon. Uh, as you can see, there's a little bit of hard water stains on the front, dust in the bottom. That's that's fine. I'm just going to have to clean the bottom, vacuum it and everything. Uh, hard water stains won't be a problem. You're not going to be able to see those once the tank is all filled. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, that's it. It looks pretty good. It's going to look even better once it's filled. Got a little light on here now. Uh, I'm going to start putting gravel in it and, you know, whatever else I want to have in the tank. So, yeah, I mean, that's 
that's how it's done, folks. Comment, rate, subscribe, respect the hobby, respect the hobbyist, and most importantly, respect the fish. I hope you enjoyed the video, and peace out.